Hello landlords, it's Ernie Garcia, landlord attorney. And today we're gonna to talk about eviction filing because before you ever file, it's important for you to know exactly just how far your judgment can go and where it won't. Let's get started. So today our focus is on your judgment and what you can do to enforce that judgment and ultimately collect some of the money that you were awarded by the eviction court. Make sure you stay all the way to the end of the video and you'll hear some tips on what you can do to collect the maximum amount of money from your judgment. So let's first discuss what you can get in an eviction judgment. The first of course is a judgment award for unpaid rent. You'll want to come to the court with a clean ledger that shows very precisely what months remain unpaid. I'll tell you what tends to trip uh, landlords up in trial is number one, when they don't have a ledger in writing. If you can present a clean ledger to the court with a balanced uh, amount owed in rent on the bottom, very easy for the court to decide just how much you're owed. However, if your ledger is at number one, not written, and you're, you're just reciting from memory, um, okay, he paid this much in July, and he paid a different amount in the month of April, and way back a year and a half ago, he paid this. That's just gonna create problems for your ability to get a definitive amount, or the exact amount that you are owed by this tenant. Come to court with a clean ledger. Next, you can recover your court costs. Now these might vary based on the number of tenants who signed the residential lease who are still on the property at the time of your eviction filing. So you may have a standard payment for one tenant or your court costs may be significantly higher for additional tenants who signed that lease. But upon uh, you winning your case, your judgment should also include an award for your court costs. Finally, you can actually recover your uh, attorney's fees, particularly if in your lease, the tenant and you have already agreed that reasonable and necessary attorney fees can be awarded in the event of a default. Specifically, in an eviction, your lease should say that the party who incurred attorney's fees is allowed to recover them. If that's the case, and you've pled for them in your eviction filing, you can get an award for attorney fees that you've spent in the prosecution of your eviction. If your lease has a written clause that awards reasonable and necessary attorney fees, your judgment should include that, and you should be able to collect in your judgment your attorney fee amount. Now let's briefly discuss what you cannot get in your judgment. If in your lease, your tenant pays utilities to you, unfortunately, unpaid utilities cannot be claimed in an eviction lawsuit. If you have an application of funds clause in your lease, it's possible that throughout the eviction process, if a payment of rent is made, you can apply that payment first to non-rent obligations like utilities or late fees or even damages to property. If you don't, things get a little more complicated because you simply cannot make a claim for utilities uh, in an eviction. Likewise, you're unable to make a claim for late fees. If late fees are incurred, you can still charge these to your tenant, but you cannot uh, get an award in your eviction judgment for late fees. Technically, for that kind of award, you would have to file a separate matter. Remember that the eviction process is a streamlined process to recover possession and unpaid rent. Additionally, you cannot make a claim for damage to your rental property. No matter how extensive the damage is, you simply cannot make this claim within an eviction. Naturally, you can deduct uh, claims for damages caused by the tenant from the security deposit, but you cannot make this claim in your eviction lawsuit. The same goes for HOA fines or city fines. If your municipality has fined the tenant for failure to maintain the yard or other violations, uh, these fees simply don't come into the eviction, but still can be deducted from the security deposit and can be featured in a subsequent uh, or separate lawsuit uh, for breach of contract that you can file against the tenant. Landlords, as always, we welcome you to follow us on our Instagram page. If you're not a member yet, join us on Facebook. Uh, and if you enjoy what you see here, give us a thumbs up. Click that like button. We enjoy that very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. 
Now let's talk about the basics of enforcement of your eviction judgment. Once the time for an appeal has passed, you are able to secure what is called a writ of possession. This is necessary if in fact the tenant has stayed beyond the judgment period and if they have not exercised their appeal right. Generally speaking, the tenant has five days to file an appeal uh, once a judgment has been signed by the Justice of the Peace. If the tenant has not filed their appeal in a timely manner, and, and the court will give the date uh, upon which you as the landlord can request a writ of possession, and if the tenant has not filed an appeal and has not left, then at that point you can pay for uh, what's called a writ of possession, and what this is, is a document that the court will sign. It's an order that goes out to the county constables uh, or the sheriff who can then, uh, based on that order, go to the property and forcibly remove the tenant who uh, is still in possession of the property and after a judgment has become final. Additional enforcement of your eviction judgment comes in your collection of the uh, unpaid rent, the court costs, possibly attorney fees that you are entitled to in your judgment. So what ways can you go about uh, collecting these amounts? So, you know, in, in, in my experience, I have found very little success with landlords using collection agencies. You're free to do it, but I, I've heard few to no good things about the effectiveness of a collection agency. So what, what other things do you have at your disposal? Well, the thing that, that I recommend to all landlords is requesting and then uh, recording an abstract of judgment. The abstract of judgment is a document that you can obtain from the court after the judgment has become final. You supply certain uh, identifying uh, information to the court regarding your tenant and the court will produce this document called an abstract. Now what we recommend is the last four of a social security number, the last four of a driver's license, and the date of birth. These tend to be the best and most effective ways to properly identify your tenant. Remember, if you've sued John Smith, your tenant, how is anybody supposed to know the specific John Smith that should be attached to this judgment? By supplying this, this information and obtaining an abstract of judgment, you can properly obtain a document that says John Smith with these three identifiers is the tenant in question. That document then can then be taken to the county uh, clerk's office, specifically the property records, where it is filed in the name of this particular John Smith and then attached to that person. So this judgment debt then becomes a judgment lien on the tenant who is specifically identified in the abstract of judgment. This will eventually show up on this person's credit history and potentially can be uh, very effective if, for example, somewhere down the line, this tenant seeks to obtain credit of some source. And when this credit is checked, this judgment lien will be found and the tenant will have the choice at this point to either pay off the debt or forego this credit application, say for the purchase of a vehicle or the purchase of a home some five or six or seven years down the line. And so we routinely get calls from uh, old judgments where a previous tenant um, is seeking to secure uh, some kind of purchase and, and, and will need credit. They'll contact us, we'll contact our client, we'll tally up uh, the total amount due. Once it's paid, we release the judgment and at that point, the landlord is able to collect the amounts that are owed. Now this is not a certainty, but it is an effective way down the line to secure a judgment lien against your specific tenant. Now if you happen to know that your tenant owns property, maybe they own some land with family members, or that they have vehicles registered. Anything that's titled with the county is subject potentially to seizure. Now there are certain you know, things that people own that are exempt uh, from this kind of process, but if you have found non-exempt property that, that can be seized, then that property can later be sold at a constable sale, and the proceeds from that sale can go toward uh, payment of the judgment. If the amount of the constable sale exceeds the judgment amount, well, you're limited to the amount of your judgment, which would also carry uh, interest. 
but the, the rest would go to uh, the, your former tenant. But this way you can potentially collect on your judgment, specifically when you know that someone has you know, vehicles or real property registered in the county. Um, it's, it's one very effective way to collect your judgment. It takes some time, but, but it is possible. Now, uh, if the tenant is looking to forego the sale, then that's when they call us and say, what do we need to pay in order to get this release? And it's the same process as with the abstract in order to prevent the foreclosure, say of some land that the uh, former tenant uh, owns mutually with other siblings usually, um, they'll pay off the judgment debt, we'll release the lien and they get to keep title to their property. But the landlord is able to recover um, their judgment uh, to, to the full amount. Finally, it's important to know that a Texas judgment will last without you trying 10 full years, so that if a tenant cannot presently pay, but foreseeably might be able to pay uh, in the future, it makes sense to abstract your judgment and just wait. Um, because it lasts for 10 years, it might be that sometime down the line, your tenant is more able and more willing to pay off the judgment debt, which again, will accrue with some amount of interest. Presently, the judgment uh, interest rate is 5%. Now, your judgment can actually be renewed for beyond the 10 years. It can be renewed in 10 year uh, intervals uh, by obtaining a, a writ of execution, uh, which is the process by which you would seize uh, property. This would extend the life of your judgment for an additional 10 years. And, you know, in some cases this makes a lot of sense, but, but 10 years is a lot of time. And, you know, if you can add even more to that, you'll, you, you have a likelihood uh, of collection uh, even, even, you know, more than 10 years down the line. And so I, I always recommend that landlords who have judgments seek to record those judgments in order to establish these judicial liens and just wait and see. The cost is not super high, but if you've got a ten or $15,000 judgment, it makes a lot of sense to properly identify your former tenant and increase the likelihood that you will eventually be able to recover the full amount of your eviction judgment.